So I received a really um, good question and the gentleman asks, when should one consider drawing demand zones from a bearish market or say, how are we gonna know where we reached an all time low in a bearish market, start drawing uh, thus, sorry, start drawing demand zones. Now, um, that's, that's a really good question, but we cannot look at technicals alone to understand when we are supposed to buy in, you know, a, a downtrend or a bearish market. Yeah. And I know we've all heard and we've all seen um, this um, Wall Street cheat sheet psychology of a uh, market cycle where pretty much when the market's going higher, right, you know, you get your hope, optimism, belief, thrill, euphoria, and then complacency, anxiety, denial, panic, anger, depression, disbelief. And what happens is, is that, you know, retail uh, traders buy up top here and um, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the smart money end up buying down here when everyone else is uh you know panicking and uh, in that anger phase and depression phase of this market cycle and again we've all heard um you know time to buy when there's blood running in the streets from baron rothschild and also um i guess more recently warren buffett once said be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful but what they leave out is a very very key component in those quotes yeah very key component and it's this and it's by a uh, quote by oscar wilde yeah nowadays people know the price of everything and the value of nothing value yeah that is what you need to determine when we are looking at buying in a bearish market or buying anything just just buying period Everybody can look at a price chart and everybody can see what the price of something is, but how many traders understand how to derive value? Not many. And I just want to draw your attention to um, a quote from Jeff Bezos, who is one of the world's um, you know, richest men or known richest men. Um, and it says, almost 20 years ago, Bezos was not freaking out during the dot-com meltdown, even though the stock had gone from over $100 per share to just $6 in less than a year. He saw things differently. The stock is not the company and the company is not the stock. So as I watched the stock fall from the $113 price to $6 in price, I was also watching all of our internal business metrics, number of customers, profit per unit, every sing single thing about the business was getting better. And so while the stock price was going the wrong way, everything inside the company was going the right way, i.e. value, yeah? He was looking at the value of the company and he was not concerned, he was not freaking out, yeah, about the price of, you know, his company because he understood that he was creating value. So in a bear market, yeah, it's okay to quote, you know, Mr. Rothschild, Baron Rothschild and and, um, uh, and uh, Warren Buffett, yeah? But if you're buying, yeah, a stock or something where you shouldn't be and, you, and it has no value, then it's gonna go down to zero. You know, that's the worst case scenario, yeah? So you can be greedy when others are fearful, but you have to understand why others are fearful. You have to understand value. You have to understand why people were dumping that stock or dumping that commodity or dumping that, um, you know, that, that, that currency pair. It doesn't make sense to just buy in a bear market, right? And I'm trying, you know, to, to, to pick off the lows. Anyways, let's get into, you know, why or how technically using supply and demand, um, you know, you could uh, understand um, how to um, pick off the, the, the lows, yeah? So in Forex, right? Value is derived from three main components, and it's you know a country's GDP, uh, inflation, inflation, and interest rates. All right, so interest rates. So these are the three main components that give a uh, a, a country country's currency 
value. So first of all, you need to do your fundamental analysis. That is, you know, number one. Yeah, that is the most important thing. And once you understand that, obviously as well, because um, uh, currencies are traded in pairs. So for example, Euro dollar, yeah, EU, yeah, you're doing the same thing with both. So you're, you're understanding right the um the figures and the data for the dollar right and then you're understanding those same figures and data for the the euro and at the moment the dollar is um as of you know recording this which is the uh, 20th of january 2020 the dollar in the united states is um the stronger currency and, and the euro in Europe and the eurozone is the weaker one. And this is just due to, you know, the, the, the data, for example, right? So once we've established that we want to be, you know, a buyer of the dollar, yeah, and a seller or a shorter of the euro, it makes things a lot easier then to understand um, where to get involved in, you know, for example, in this We'd be, be, we'd be shorting, you know, that currency pair, yeah? But just for um, argument's sake, and going back to the question, we're talking about bear markets, yeah? So let's pretend that, you know, the base and the quote currency had switched around, so it was actually U, E, yeah, on a price chart, meaning that if we wanted to go long on this currency pair, we would be buying the dollar and we'd be selling the euro. So you'd be looking at demand zones. So what we're looking at, and this is how technically, yeah, we can get involved in, um, you know, maybe something like a bear market. One second, right? So, right, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see prices, you know, tend to come down like this. You'll get maybe some sort of pullback at some point. Yeah, maybe one, two, and then, you know, we're going lower. Now again, understanding the backdrop, yeah, of your, you understand value. You understand that you should be a buyer of the dollar. This could just be negative sentiment. Who knows what's, you know, Donald Trump could open his mouth and drive the dollar, you know, lower, etc. who knows. But when the market is coming down, we understand the figures and the numbers. So the more uh, prices end up coming lower, the better the value where this is price and this is time, yeah? So one of the, uh, the techniques I use is not to necessarily try to always pick off the absolute lows unless Obviously, we're in an area of potential demand. So we have to look to the left, right, and see if there is a demand zone, right, here, which is, you know, which is relevant. So how far do you go back, yeah? Um, uh, you know, you can go back maybe a year or two. But what, what we're concerned with is, is current price, yeah, or current um, uh, price and where prices come into this current demand zone. And even though it might be, you know, two, three years ago, um, what we're looking at is just understanding if this is going to be a bargain price. We knew it was a bargain price, you know, six months, you know, maybe a month ago, a year ago, etc. Now, we're just understanding if this is going to be one. And none of us know, anyone who says that they actually know if this is going to be, you know, this is going to reverse at this point, none of us know because there are no certainties in trading. We're just basically trading the probabilities, hence the reason why we manage our risk. Because if we knew what was going to, um, you know, what was going to occur, then we would, bet it, we would bet it all on that one trade. We'd become, you know, millionaires overnight. Right. If I knew exactly what was going to happen, then why am I uh, why am I uh, uh, gonna gonna um, manage my risk and you know and only trade one percent on a trade? Doesn't make sense. If I knew what was going to happen, if anyone knew what was going to happen, then ask them. Yeah, ask them if you know what's going to happen. Yeah, then why not bet it all on that on that one trade? They don't, so they won't. So, um, so anyways, 
prices come down here, none of us know what's gonna happen, but we have obviously tell tale signs that potentially prices could start to, you know, reverse here. Yeah. Now, part of the question was um was um what was it again? So uh, how do we know? So how much demand do we really need to see? Yeah, before potentially drawing demand zones in a bearish market. Yeah, so obviously one of the things we need to see is how far does price move away from there. So, do you want to be a buyer here at a level of demand? Yes or no depends. It's up to you. If you think this is an, an area of um, of value, potential value, then you would just go in at maybe um, you know a half a percent, one percent, whatever your you know risk management is, and place your stop loss below the low. None of us know when prices come into any demand or supply zone if it's going to you know um, if it's going to reverse there. Now, one of the safest ways is not necessarily to try to pick the lows. Yeah, if you don't want to, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, is to wait for the market to tell you that there is proven demand here. Yeah. So let's say, for example, you start to see prices go higher, and this maybe this might represent it's probably like a daily or a weekly chart. I wouldn't recommend you doing, you know, looking at you know something like an hourly chart to to pre try and um, you know predict a uh, a reversal in a bearish market. This has to be you know a daily or a weekly time frame. So let's say for example, you know you've had three, four, five, you know updates. Now a lot of traders will say, oh well, I've missed the trade. Not necessarily, right? What we do know for sure is that there is definitely value, yeah, here. There is demand at this price point, yeah, and prices are going higher. Now, what we want to do is wait for potential pullbacks. Yeah. Um, actually, before we get to the pullbacks, what we want to do first is look for potential structures. Yeah. Uh, to be to be broken. Yeah. Because technically, technically, we want to see a potential change in structures being broken, and that would indicate. Um, that the trend may be coming to an end because obviously a trending market is lower highs and lower lows being made like that and as soon as prices you know break some sort of level you know however it breaks it might go down then up etc then this creates what a potential higher low and higher high yeah, so that's one of the things that we need to look for is a break in obvious structures. Yeah, before deciding whether there is, you know, a, a, a potential reversal, you know, around here. So, looking for first potential structure breaks, and that could happen here, and that could happen there. We're looking for the amount of distance traveled. Yeah, from the absolute low and let the market prove that there is demand in that area. Yeah. So once these structures start to break, then we know there is demand down there. And then what we look for is potential pullbacks into demand zones. All right. So prices come back down here we know that at this point in time you know maybe a week ago a month ago there was demand here and recent demand at this price point then what we're looking for is understanding if there's going to be demand there and this ends up being fresh demand right here and then we look to go into the lower time frames for um uh, you know, entries, etc. If you want to pick off the absolute lows, but we know for sure in a bearish market, yeah, if price has been coming down and what you consider to be a bearish market, what we want to see is structures break before looking at getting involved here. And some traders will say, well, that's just a simple double bottom pattern. Yes, and it is. You know, that could be a double bottom pattern. It presents itself how it presents itself, right? But we need to wait for proof. Yeah, that there is 
demand, so distance and structures, and then we're looking for pullbacks into created demand zones. And also as well, we only really have two um, market states, yeah? Overall, we have ranging and trending, yeah? So if prices in a bear market, yeah, let's say for example, this is, this is the bear market, actually, we'll go back. Uh, all right, so let's say for example, this is the bear market, all right, and rain, uh, sorry, trending, and then markets tend to do what? They tend to enter into some sort of ranging market, yeah, and then, depending on obviously, you know, the uh, the value perspective, then we might have another trending market, yeah. So we want to see an end to the trend by price breaking structures and major structures as well and also um, uh, understanding how far price has actually traveled as well if this is going to be you know uh, prices only maybe moved you know this amount is that strong demand are you really going to start drawing demand zones from here uh, i probably wouldn't yeah but a strong demand zone now, it's proven because buyers are buying at whatever price this was. They've seen it as an absolute bargain, the banks, the financial institutions. And then what we do is we look for the first buying opportunity once we see proof of value, proof of value, value over everything, yeah? So first of all, just to recap, understand why you're buying right fundamental analysis number two we look for things like distance traveled yeah proof of value wait for price to prove itself if you're unsure about taking you know demand zones that were maybe you know a year old two years old etc if it's more recent if it's more maybe like a month two months three months etc then you can probably take those types of zones anything more than maybe a year or two and you're not too confident in whether that demand zone or that supply zone is going to hold then just wait for proof of the demand to be there and then what you're looking for is um you know, a pullback into that zone. So another scenario before I, uh, before I move forward, one sec, let me just take this, is you might have a scenario where you have maybe a bit of something like this. So you have, it's actually, uh, right, so you have a move like this, you have Move that comes up, oh, sorry. A move that comes up into into here. You get a bit of a pullback like that, like that, and then you get a move that does something like this. Yeah, so you're getting higher highs, higher lows in this scenario. This now creates, and this higher low creates a demand zone. Right there, this is proof of value. So then if prices come back down to this area, this would be the first zone that you'd be looking for in order to get Yeah, that would be the first zone. Again, none of us know which one is going to work. We try here because we know that this is the first area, right, where there was definitely a bargain, prices moved higher. So does this work out? Yep, yeah, brilliant. If it doesn't work out, let's say, and prices fall from there, then the next area to get involved to see what's the bargain is going to be down in this demand zone right down here. Yeah, down at the absolute lows. Because we know that this was an absolute bargain. This is also a 
a bargain area because this is this is how you know supply and demand works higher highs higher lows lower highs lower lows are areas of potential uh, bargain areas and then we just basically wait for price to come down into there and see if that is a bargain based off of our fundamental analysis yes no make some money lose some money if you lose don't worry if prices are still a bargain then we wait for price to come down here and then that's going to be our buy yeah so remember as well prices would have been going from a potential trending market to now a potential ranging market and if prices are going to range where they're going to range from between this low and potentially this high yeah so this is exactly what we're looking at and this is really how to understand how to you know uh, basically pick the lows and start drawing demand zones and really start buying within a bearish or bullish market just reverse it um, I hope that helps and um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you find this content useful, comment as well and I'll try and get back to you if you have any other questions. So thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon.